We've, uh, over the last several weeks, been, God's been speaking to us about dreaming. Dreaming with Him, co-dreaming, dreaming for generations, dream, dreaming dreams that will impact generations to come. And uh, I want to just share a few thoughts and a, a, a quick encouragement on preparing to co-dream. I'm preparing. What do, what do we need to do to prepare to dream with God? And uh, this is going to be simple and, and very quick, but I just want to encourage you with a few things. The first thing I want to say to you is that our dreaming flows best from a place of being and not a place of doing. Thank you for your excitement. Who said amen? I'll, I'll buy you a coffee, Jenna, or something after this for sure. Our dreaming comes and flows best from a place of being, not performing and doing. We are human beings, not human doings. And, uh, and the more we try to do things, probably the less we, we, we are able to receive the dreams that God has for us. And so our, our co-dreaming with God comes from a place of being and not doing. Three things that I want to encourage you in this morning in terms of preparing to co-dream with God. Three things that you should rest in. And the first one is just simply this. We sang about it this morning. But how much He loves you. You have to come to fresh places of rest in His love. When you get a greater revelation of His love, everything else changes and comes into perspective. I'm not just talking about a few elements of love that you might have in your mind. I'm talking about something that goes way beyond what you can comprehend in your mind. Amen? To the place where John the disciple said, and this was his, his phrase that he claimed for himself, he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. He didn't say that he was more loved than anyone else. But what he was articulating was how aware of the love of God he had become. And he was the disciple that Jesus loved. And we need to come to fresh places of rest that, of how much he loves you. It's from that place that it is almost impossible but to dream and to co-dream with God. Amen? John 13, 23 is a scripture that, where John says that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. That was his experience. And uh, we know that God used him greatly. The second thing that we need to rest in is who has qualified you? Who has qualified you to co-dream with God and to bring heaven to earth? Who has qualified you to bring the power of God and the authority of God into your sphere of influence? Who has qualified you? In First Colossians 1, sorry, Colossians 1 verse 12 and 13 is a script, such a powerful scripture that says that God has delivered you and He has conveyed you into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He has qualified you, that scripture says. He has delivered you, qualified you, and conveyed you into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And when, when you are qualified by Him, that outdoes any other thing that you would ever need to do. Amen? Who qualifies you is important. Anyone who studies understands that. But once you are qualified, you cease to do anything. You cease from the doings and you become the beings. Once you are qualified as a, as a medical doctor, as a surgeon, as a, you cease from the strivings to qualify. Amen? And one of the things you need to settle and rest in is that you do not qualify yourself, but He qualifies you. That's why we broke bread this morning, because we are not qualified by our squeaky clean lives, but rather by receiving His righteousness. Amen. That's a free gift that sets us apart and stops us from working to try and be a nice guy. I'm so thankful I don't have to be a nice guy. Amen? I'm so thankful I don't have to try and be nicer than Dan, because Dan's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so thankful, he says it's true. Bless him with humility too, Lord. Yeah. But I'm so thankful that I don't have to qualify myself, and I don't have to compare myself to anyone, but that he qualifies us. So we need to rest in the fact that he has qualified you. You have not qualified yourself, and if you're 
trying to qualify yourself, let me, I just have one word for you. Stop. I say that with all love in my heart. Stop trying to qualify yourself. Stop trying to be so good and so nice. And receive His gift of righteousness instead of your attempts at righteousness. Amen? The third thing I want to encourage you to do or, or rest in, and the third, I phrased it in a question, why would He co-dream with you? Why would God co-dream with you? Why would He do it? He knows your weaknesses. He knows your past. He knows your propensities. Why would He co-dream with you? And the answer is simple and you have to rest in this. Is He made you so that He could co-dream with you. He loves you enough to qualify you. And He made you to be one who co-dreams with Him. You were born for such a time as this. With any weakness, with any failures that you have experienced, you were born for such a time as this to co-dream with Him. And He wants you to find fresh places of rest in Him. Rest in how much He loves you and revelation of how much He loves you, which will blow your mind today and again tomorrow and again the next day. He wants you to rest in that He has qualified you and you don't have to qualify yourself. And He wants you to rest in the fact that you were created to co-dream with Him. Man, what a God we serve. What a, what a God that loves us that qualifies us and made us to co-dream with Him. And those are three things I want to encourage you to rest in. I want to encourage you to receive three things also. In, from that place of rest, I want to encourage you to receive three things. The first thing that I want to encourage you to receive is His righteousness. I've already mentioned that. But without receiving His righteousness on an ongoing basis you will not walk in the qualifications that He has made available for you. It's getting quiet in here now. That's why He says in Matthew 6, 63, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. You need to keep on seeking to receive that free gift. Not keep on seeking to, to try and be righteous, but keep on seeking to receive His righteousness. Amen? St stop putting the effort into trying to be right and put your effort into receiving his, his gift of righteousness. The second thing I want to encourage you to receive is abundant grace. Now, I don't have time to, to revisit everything we've ministered on grace in the last six months. But I do want to read you one key scripture from that. And that's Romans 5, 17 to 21. It says this, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Then verse 20 says, But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. The original language is grace superabounded. Grace overwhelmed sin. And grace wants to overwhelm sin or weakness or defeat in your life. His grace wants to overwhelm it so that it is completely and absolutely overwhelmed by His grace. And His grace is a divine influence on your heart. It's the God stuff in your heart. It's the God experiences in your heart that changes your life forever, that's grace. And so, those first two things that we need to receive or He makes available for us to receive in preparing to dream is that we can receive His righteousness. His righteousness. That means when He wants to give you a prophetic word for the people that you work with and you say, but God, I haven't really... I haven't really been praying so much and I'm not sure if I'm tuned in enough to get a prophetic word. It means that cancels that argument in your mind when you receive His righteousness and He can drop right into you right there, Son, you are my righteousness. 
You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why would I not want to give you a prophetic word for your co-worker who needs God? Amen? So, receiving His righteousness and receiving abundance of grace. The third thing that I want to encourage you to receive is just simply this, and the last thing I'm sharing with you this morning is His invitation to dream with Him again. There is an invitation. Will you receive it? How many of you know you can reject invitations? It doesn't make them any less valid. And it doesn't cancel what you were invited to. Amen? But if we have an invitation, we can give it. He has an invitation that He gives to us. <laughs> and He wants you to take the invitation. And this morning, God's been speaking to us for weeks and weeks and weeks about co-dreaming with Him. And He wants to encourage you to rest in His love for Him, His qualification of you, His death and resurrection. And He wants you to rest in that He has created you to dream with Him. He wants you to receive the gift of righteousness, overwhelming, abundant grace. And then the last thing He's saying to us this morning is, will you receive and will you accept and will you come and dream with me again? I am looking for dreamers that will dream in a way that will cause heaven to come to earth. I'm looking for dreamers that will take some land for me in our province and in our city and in our nation. I'm looking for dreamers in their workplaces. I'm looking for dreamers in their families that will see families redeemed. I'm looking for dreamers that will grab a hold of heaven and see the power of God flow afresh in healings and signs and wonders and miracles. He says, I'm looking for dreamers and I've got abundant invitations. Just looking for someone to say, here I am. I receive it. I will rest in you. And I will receive your righteousness and your grace. And I will dream again. I will dream again the kind of dream that will bring heaven to earth. Because I serve a wonderful and a good father. Amen? That's us this morning. So I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. We're going to pray. Wasn't that a great morning? Great to celebrating families and dedications of children. Great to hear praise reports and testimonies. Which, by the way are the same as prophetic words over your lives. And so anything that has been praised and anything that has been shared by way of testimony this morning becomes available from the Father's heart towards His sons and daughters this morning. There's suddenlies that are going to start to come forth. There's dreams that He wants you to dream again and afresh. He wants to remind you and He wants you to dream again. Amen? So won't you stand with us? We're going to pray and we're going to close. How did I do? Did I preach short? I even get a round of applause for that. That's impressive. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you love us beyond what we can even experience or imagine and comprehend. Scripture says us, what is the height and the breadth and the depth and the width of your love for us? Immeasurable, never-ending love, despite us and in spite of us, you first loved us. You loved us enough to qualify us, and it cost you everything. We didn't come cheap. We were not found on clearance or in a bargain rack. We came full priced and you paid it and then some. Father, I thank you that we can receive your love and we can receive the gift of righteousness this morning that positions us and causes the abundance of grace through righteousness to reign in our lives. So, Father, I thank you for the overwhelming grace of God, the superabundance, the oversupply of grace in comparison to sin that exists. 
Because you said where sin exists, grace super abounds. It abounds to a super level, to a whelming over level, to much more than we could even almost understand. And this morning we want to say, and we want to open our hearts afresh. Why don't you just where you are, maybe close your eyes or lift your hands or whatever you feel comfortable to receive. Would you receive from God this morning? Would you just where you are, just in your mind's eye, allow Him to pour it out over you? Would you allow Him to pour His Spirit out on you? Would you allow Him to drop something into your heart of something that you were created for? and that He has redeemed you for and purchased you for, would you allow the Holy Spirit to start to speak to you? Would you allow Him to remind you and to redeem things? Would you allow Him to bring afresh into your mind that which He has called you for, that which He has destined you for and made you for? So Holy Spirit, right now all over this place, I thank You that You fill hearts and fill minds. God, that you would go beyond, beyond even our limitations and our shortcomings. Thank you that you created us to dream with you. Thank you that even when it's tough and even in dark seasons and night seasons, that's when dreams come. But thank you that we can rest in your love for us, your righteousness and your grace. That we can rest in your qualification that we were made for you, for heaven to come to earth. I pray for your sons and daughters. I pray for our city. I pray for our province and our nation. Let the dreamers arise. Let those who will say, here I am, I receive the invitation to dream with an almighty God and a loving Father. I receive the invitation to dream again for that which should come from heaven to earth. So today we say, God, here we are. We receive it. We respond to your invitation to dream with you again. I pray it this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us for a cup of coffee afterwards and, of course, a meal that we want to share with one another as we celebrate this Generosity Sunday. God bless you.